This is the orientation video for the metal shop at Makehaven. So before we go in, we're gonna note what it says on the door, make sure to secure any loose items, things like hoodie strings, earbuds, stuff like that. Glasses are required in the metal shop, just as they are in the wood shop. And last, but definitely not least, you are absolutely not permitted to drink alcohol before or during using the metal shop. So let's go in. What we're going to look at first is right here. So this is our PPE wall. Uh, again, same as in the wood shop, all that's required like across the board is glasses, but we also have hearing protection for use at your discretion. There are definitely some loud tools in here. There are gloves. Gloves are for carrying material or handling really hot material. They are not for use using power tools because they can get caught into the tool and pull your fingers right in. Face shields for using grinders, hair ties for holding hair back. These are sleeves that you use to protect your arms from sharp glass or sheet metal. And these are steel toes. So these go over your shoes. So if you're working with heavy blocks of metal, they will protect your toes. You also can wear shoes that have steel toes built in to protect your toes. Some other safety things we're just gonna mention are it's important to not surprise people. It can be loud, and so someone might not hear you walking up behind them. So if you wanna get someone's attention, try to walk into their line of view, wait till they're not busy. Um, and definitely, if you're gonna make any really loud noises all of a sudden, make sure to let people know. Just say something like, hey all, gonna be a loud noise in a second, just so that no one's startled and, and gets hurt. There is the buddy rule for some tools in here, which you will know because there is the buddy symbol on the label. There are no windows, so in this room, your buddy needs to be in the room. If at any point you want to use a tool that requires a buddy and there's no one in here, feel free to just grab someone from the main room, be like, hey, you know, would you mind coming in for a second, being my buddy while I use this tool? In general, you know, people are, are happy to do that. I'll also point out that in this room, there's a motion activated exhaust system. So there's a lot of air that gets pulled through here. And for that reason, you can use low VOC, uh, adhesives and finishes and whatnot in this room because the air is so well exhausted. We also have the fume hood for using high VOC uh, finishes and adhesive stuff like that. Often in the metal shop you'll be cleaning something up and you will use a, a rag and it'll get oily and that is very flammable. In fact we have had an oil rag fire in the shop in the past so now what we do is we have these red bins these are the trash bins that we use. They have metal lids so that sparks can't land in them. Um, and that is where you need to make sure to put any rags. So we don't leave rags laying around the space that a spark could land on and catch on fire. Uh, they go right in that bin. Clean rags live right over here in the, on the wall. This is where they can be when, when they're clean. When they're oily and nasty, they go in a red bin. Over here, we will look at the fire extinguishers. There are two fire extinguishers. The one on top is a normal ABC fire extinguisher for, you know, if some paper or wood or something like that catches fire. Down here is what's called a class D fire extinguisher. Uh, and it, so it pours out a powder that is for metal fires. So if for some reason you have a piece of magnesium or phosphorus or something, and it somehow manages to catch fire, the purpose of this fire extinguisher is to put that fire out. It has a cart because it's quite heavy. You can roll it over and use it to extinguish that fire. So important just to know what these two are for. This is not an exit, this is the boiler room. Over here, if you go up one flight, so you're at ground level, that is the fire exit. And last safety consideration over here is welding. So welding produces incredibly bright light that will damage your eyes quickly if you look at it with unprotected eyes. So on this rack here are welding shields for your eyes. If you would like to go into the welding space to watch what's going on, um, you can put on a hood. Otherwise, you can watch through the screen, which will protect your eyes. If you do choose to put on a hood on the side of these helmets, you need to make sure that the shade setting is set all the way up and the switches are set to weld. So that's how you make sure that this will protect your eyes. A bunch of the tools have the card protection system to make sure that people, only people who are trained are using the equipment. 
make sure that the button is the e emergency stop is not pressed. So you would twist it if it was pressed. Then you would scan your card on an associated black scanning box. And then push the green middle button and this green light will turn on to tell you that the tool is activated. So now we're gonna do a quick walk around of the shop just to see the kinds of things that are in here. Over here is the scrap metal corner. This will hopefully be moved to a different location soon, but the idea will remain the same. These are bins that are scrap metal going to the scrap yard. Everything else is hopefully somewhat usable perhaps, um, but we do cull through it periodically. These shelves are organized by the type of material. So there's stone up top, copper, aluminum, brass, coated steels, uncoated steel, and it looks like more plastic on the bottom. Different types of metal behave differently, so it's important to have a sense of how to tell the differences between them. So for copper, it's this pretty distinctive copper color, sometimes green, once it's rusted, that's relatively easy to tell. Aluminum is this kind of shiny color, silver looking. It's very light compared to an equivalently sized piece of steel. It also doesn't respond to magnets. So if you take a piece of magnet to it, it won't respond. So that's a great way to tell if it's aluminum. It's also very soft and you can't use aluminum on a bunch of the tools. Any of the grinders, this will just melt. So it's important to bear that in mind. Down here, we have some pieces of brass. So uh, this is like a, you can sort of compare it to the copper. It's, a, well, we call it brass color. So normally fairly easy to tell. This is coated steels, so this is a piece of steel with paint on it so that it doesn't rust. Down here we have uncoated steels, which you can see get kind of rusty. So these two big machines are band saws, and in the middle we have a bunch of our plastic equipment, so an injection molder and vacuum former, as well as a pressure oven. Now over here we have metrology, so these are measuring tools. The surface plate is a precision instrument. It's a big chunk of granite that is extremely flat, so it's important to be very gentle with it, not drop things on it or just use it like a work surface. Over here we have other measuring tools, so make sure, as with everything, to put them back where you found them so that other people can find them. Um, over here we have a lot of other important tools, including deburring tools. Often when you cut a piece of metal, it has sharp edges, you can use these deburring tools to remove those sharp edges so it doesn't cut you. The fume hood is obviously a great tool. Make sure to, to get the badge. One of the most important pieces is to make sure that if you're using it for something with VOCs, the lid is closed and the fan is on. If this big lid is open, it doesn't do anything for you. Over here are the lathes and the water jet and some tooling, sandblaster. And if you choose to watch the introduction to metalworking video, then we'll go over what each of these tools is for and why you might want to use it. This will be the jewelry area soon. Um, then over here, we have some electricity hanging from the ceiling. That's fairly straightforward. We also have pneumatic airline hanging from the ceiling. So these pull and then you stop pulling when it's clicking. So get ready and then you stop. You can let go now when it's not clicking. So we're gonna pull it out. It's clicking. From the hoses, you push on the implement, pull back the collar, and then the tool will come off. This one's auto-retracting, so it stays pulled back, but it still doesn't hurt to pull back on the collar, and on some of them you need to. Push in the tool this is the hard part. You have to push pretty hard to overcome that air, and then release. And now the implement is reconnected. So some other important things we're gonna cover are over here, we have the out of order signs on the wall. If you're using a tool and it doesn't seem to be working or behaving as expected, you can put an out of order sign on it. Just write on the sign what the problem is. And if you post on Slack, that'll also help me get to the problem sooner. Speaking of Slack, if you have any questions or problems in general, feel free to post into the metalworking Slack channel. Over here are the badging checklists. So when you get checked out on a tool by a facilitator, this is what you'll they'll use but also feel free to refer to these afterwards to remind yourself of all the safety things you need to do when you are using a tool. And then here are the facilitators for the metal shop. Some of the tools have foot pedals, as you can see here, and that's to make sure if someone were to get hurt, their foot comes off and it stops immediately, which is a great safety feature, but it also means that the switch needs to be turned off when you're done using it. 
Otherwise, if someone accidentally steps on a foot pedal, then the tool will be activated, which would be dangerous. Last but not least is when you are done working, uh, you need to take into account the time that it'll take to clean up what the mess that you've made. So cleaning is a part of the making process. There's no cleaning crew here. Um, it, this place is only as clean as, as you leave it. And in addition, cleaning is important for safety. A, a not clean space is not safe to use. So it's important to make sure that you do a good job of cleaning up when you're done. You know, a budget 10 minutes must plus or minus to clean up when you're done. Cleaning up is, is not an optional step. Something to bear in mind when you're cleaning is that often it'll seem like, oh, I just used the tool for a second, didn't make that much of a mess. But like you can see here, you know, after a few times when someone uses a tool, it, it leaves a mess. So even a little bit is important to clean up because it builds and builds. And finally, the shop will be filthy if people aren't cleaning up the little bit of mess that they make. We do have cameras, so if someone leaves a significant mess, then we'll have to check the cameras and ask that person to come back and, and do a better job of cleaning up. Uh, make sure to throw away any scraps, either in a scrap bin or if it's reusable, then on a shelf. Over here, we have brooms and dust pans. Uh, on some of the tools, we have brushes for cleaning the, the chips off. Some of the tools have, have dust collectors or shop vacs, so you just push the switch on them to turn them on. There are also shop vacs roaming around the space. If uh, they sound like they're full, feel, to, feel free to dump them out into the big trash bin. Make sure to put away all of your tools when you're done so that you are leaving the space in a way that other people can, can use it and find the things that they need uh, when, when they come to use the space. And if you see someone who isn't cleaning up after they're done, then feel free to say something. You, you don't need to be aggressive about it. You can just introduce yourself, uh, maybe say how cool the thing they're working on and ask some questions about it and then ask if they wouldn't mind spending a few minutes cleaning up the shop with you. If it seems to be more problematic than that, then feel free to let a staff person know. Uh, it is very important to leave the shop clean. So that is something in a shared maker space that we need to prioritize. So thanks for watching and I can't wait to see all the cool things you make in the metal shop.